Well, you, you know, if, if things are so clear to you, why are you putting those questions to me? If you know it all, if you are privy to the meetings that took place between the Prime Minister, the Finance Minister and the other senior leaders of the Congress Party, there's no point asking me that question. I am maintaining what I have said. And how many ways you may ask this question, I maintain the ground that at the end of the day, certain decisions are left to the judgment of the local administrators, which are then respected. And that's how it, I feel it turned out to be. But so the I real thing is, Mr. Anna Hazare is now free. His, those who quoted the rest along with him are free, and yet the state succeeded in preventing the breach of law. And I think there's reason to be satisfied with that. Now, how is the law and order situation any different? I come back to this question. Anna Hazare, Arvind Kejriwal still say they don't want food. They will continue their fast. You've now got a plane on standby to try and take them to Pune, do unto them what you did to Baba Ram. They moved the action out of Delhi. How is the law and order situation any better, any different? To me, it would seem that things are more fragile, more volatile now than they were in the morning. And are you saying the decision the to free Anna Hazare was a decision taken by the police and had nothing to do with political intervention? Is that your case, Minister? The preventive detention of Mr. Anna Hazare and his followers in the morning was intended to thwart the open defiance of law. No state government or no government of any country has the right to be in power. It cannot enforce the law in the face of open defiance. And the first charge on the duties of any democratic government is to enforce, even-handedly, the rule of law. This government did that. At the same time, having prevented the breach of law, they, they have the, the police administration or whoever decided have chosen to free Anna Hazare, which is as well, which is very good. There's no point having uh, a political protester being lost behind oh, sure. uh, jail for, 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 for going, uh, going oh, on fast. Oh, sure. But why was this question not asked in the, the morning? The wisdom, the wisdom that you're now seeing that there's no point in having a political protester who wants to fast uh, behind bars. Why did this wisdom not dawn in the morning? Why this draconian action of going and arresting Anna Hazar even before he broke a single rule? Justice Egde says this is a violation of his fundamental rights to expression. Now this wisdom dawns. Is this because the government saw the reaction across the country, panicked, quivered and said, we must free Anna Hazare before we have more trouble on our hands, Minister? Rahul, will you please try and see what I'm trying to say? Please understand. We are talking of Section 144, the prohibitory orders, which Anna Hazare had threatened to violate. Instead of allowing him to violate them and then take him into custody, the police went in for preventive detention, which by definition and in its very nature is intended to prevent the infraction of law. The government chose to resort to that, the police chose to resort to that, and now that that has been avoided, the, op the breach was on account of his insisting on going to a particular place without observing the conditionalities imposed for, the, for him to... Minister, what happens if Anna Hazari that still insists that he wishes to go on a fast unto death? What if he still insists he will go on to a fast unto death? Will the UPA government have him arrested once more? 